Hello everyone, welcome back to Girls Frontline tomorrow with you. Let's go ahead and continue. Huh, it's already morning. It feels like I slept less than usual. I guess five more minutes wouldn't hurt. I turned over to hit the snooze button. Wait, what? Instead of the, just the snooze button, there's a second button labeled drop the beat. I try to think how this could have happened. Hmm, okay, I, I see. Uh, let's see, Let, let's save. But I draw a blank. My curiosity gets the better of me and I tap the button. Oh dear. Hey DW, how'd you get into my fucking room? But bask in the glory of IDW. Everyone. Just a little longer. Lord. What the hell is this? It's that weird cat from the other day, IDW. Well, how did she? The song is loud enough to make me jump out of bed and take a couple steps back. I can't stop watching her dance. Just then, Wellrod slams my door open and barges in with a vowel cry. Be gone, fiend of hell! Don't you dare lay your finger on Master! She clutches her head and falls to her knees. The sight snaps me out of my reverie. I pick up my phone and hit the stop button. The dance and song immediately stop and are replaced by my usual home screen. I run over to Wellrod and check on her. She seems really shaken. Wellrod, is everything okay? Master, I can't. A second. She takes a few seconds to compose herself and then speaks again. That thing right now, whatever it was, directly attacked the base layer of my neural cloud. Oh, well, Rod, I'm sorry. I don't feel well. It's like I've been hit with an EMP. I'm sorry, Master, but I need to run diagnostics on my neural cloud and repair any damage caused. You will not be able to train today. Uh, that's all right, well, Rod. Take care of yourself first. Thank you, Master. She staggers out of my room, leaving the door open behind her. She seems to have been seriously affected by the thing. ITW, what have you done? Taking down top notch security doll without any effort whatsoever. ITW, what are you? Maybe this is why the box warned me. I should look into this some other time. IDW Muse and swiftly scampers out of my room. Oh, get the hell out of my room, IDW. You just hurt well, Rod. I try not to think about this morning's incident as I prepare for school and head downstairs. Alright, I get to see 45 again. Ah, it's gonna be a good day. We finish breakfast quickly. Well, Rod insists on driving me to school, but I refuse her. Ah, uh, not today, Well, Rod. Go and take some rest. I can walk to school in time. Even you need at least a few hours to recover completely from neural cloud maintenance. But Master, it's my duty. It's fine, Well, Rod. Think of this as recharging your HP to 100% to be able to fight at full strength. Well, Rod's eyes light up. Very well, Master. Farewell for now. Our paths will cross again when the, la the last of sunlight departs his realm. See you later, Well, Rod. I barely taken a few steps out of my house, and when Kalina calls me, I pick up my phone. Good morning, Shiki. Her vo oh, oh no. Her voice sounds hoarse and lacks her usual energy. Did something happen? Morning, Kalina. Are you alright? Ah, uh, about that. I hear her cough over the phone before she continues. Oh no, Kalina's sick. 
gotten sick. I'm sorry, but I won't be able to attend school today. Santa Coffin comes over the phone once more. Maybe tomorrow too. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. But to be honest, it's hard for me to imagine you falling sick. <laughs> I shouldn't have played outside during a storm yesterday, but I love the rain. You caught a cold? Yes. Oh, Kalina. Well, I hope you learned your lesson. Get well soon. Thanks. Bye, Shiki. She ends a call. It looks like I'm walking home alone to school today. I sigh. It's hard to imagine a day without Kalina's liveliness. I really hope she gets better soon. Before long, I made it to school. Albeit without Kalina accompanying me as usual. As I run the corner, I nearly crash into someone approaching me from the other way carrying a large stack of files. Backing up just in time, I realize that this person is Roe. It's barely past 8 a.m. and she's already working. Good morning, Ro. Good morning, Shiki. Excuse me for a moment. I need to deliver these to Miss Springfield. I'll be right back. A moment later, she returns, an expression of relief on her face. <sighs> I managed to finish those before classes today. Shiki, once again, thank you for helping out the other day. Your contribution was extremely valuable and... Hey, it's alright. It was kind of fun for me, to be honest. Rose sighs. It's not as much fun for me, trying to get so much work done without the orders. I mean, without the others. By the way, why are you at school this early in the, morning, in the day? I usually just come to school around this time. I feel like the peace and quiet. It's nice to have a free hour on hand just in case. Ah, that's great. Students hardly seem to care about the importance of punctuality these days. Keep it up, Shiki. Thanks, but it's not really a big deal. You know, I would gladly give you a position in the disciplinary committee. All you need to ask... Oops, all you need to do is ask. Ah, no thanks. I think I'll pass for now. There's a moment of silence. I decide to ask about something that has been on my mind for a while. Ro, don't you ever relax? You seem to be hard working hard all the time without any breaks. Like a machine. Ro blinks. She stares at me for a few moments with an expression of utter incredulity. Now that I think about it, that sounds like a really silly question. Shiki. I am a machine. T-Dolls are built for efficiency. We don't need breaks. You can be more though. If you're just made to work a lot of time, why were you made a T-Doll instead of a mass production android? Why did you join Griffin High as a student? We're always silent for a moment. I don't know. I've always felt like this. Maybe this is now I've been programmed. All my human aspects are meant to help other humans feel more at ease around me. Besides, isn't this what humans do in Japan? Work long hours every day like machines to learn a living? People even work themselves to death. As a tea doll, I don't have to worry about that. Maybe by working like this, I'm saving life instead. We both remained silent for a few moments, lost in thought. Sorry, that got too heavy too fast. I I'm just saying, you should relax a bit more. Like, hang out with your friends more often. Row nods. I'll keep that in mind. If you need anything, you can always come and talk to me though. Uh, no. I... I don't want to talk to you because I need to, but because I want to. As friends. Can't we do that? It takes a while for Roy to reply to my question. Yes, I guess we could. 
I'll be in the disciplinary committee office every day at the school, so you know where to find me. That is, unless Sop forces me to attend the robotics club. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Bro, how come you and Sop 2 are such good friends? The two of you seem to be polar opposites. You're the ideal hardworking student, while Sop 2 is a troublemaker, unbound by any rules. Rose smiles a bit. Honestly, I don't know myself. It's true that Sop causes me the most trouble out of every student in school. I can't get angry at her. There's just something about her that always makes me feel happy. Maybe it's that childlike innocence that she has. You know that she never means any harm. She just wants to have fun. Also, I also like how she can get along with pretty much everyone. She cares about her friends a lot. Wow! Oh, speak of the devil. Here she comes. Sop 2 appears at the end of the corridor, running towards us at full speed. I prepare to jump aside, but thankfully, she slows down and stops right beside Ro. Good morning, Ro! Oh, Shiki, you're here too. Good morning! Good morning, Sop 2. Ro turns to Sop 2 with an angry look on her face. How many times can I have, have, eh, have I told you not to run in the corridors? You could seriously injure someone. I want to roll. My reflexes are good enough. It's not about reflexes. An accident could happen at any time. Oh, Ro, you worry way too much about me. Relax. I'm not harming anyone. The last thing I'd want is to cause any trouble for you. As if you aren't doing that all the time. Just be careful. You're too reckless at times. Enough to make me, in fact, anyone, worry. My presence has been completely forgotten. I suppose now would be a good time for me to leave. Okay, girls, see you later. I got something to do, so I'll get going. See you later, Shiki. As I walk away, I can still catch parts of their conversation. Mostly Saptu's loud and excited voice. So can you skip Disco and head over to my club at the school? Stop calling the disciplinary committee Disco. It's disrespectful. And no, I can't. You know how much work I've got. That's a funny name, right? <laughs> yeah, it is funny. I'll give you that. I can't skip it. Please. Just once. It won't hurt too much. And for what we planned for tomorrow morning. The first class of the day is History with Helion. One of my least favorite subjects. Combined with Miss Helian's droning voice, makes this easily the most boring class of the day. Kalina's absence makes me realize just how integral to my school life she has been so far. I would normally chat with her, or even help her skip class. Without her, this class seems to have lost most of its, most of its energy. Having no other choice, I force myself to pay attention to Miss Helian. After the Northern Lights incident, Ukraine was the largest country in Eastern Europe unaffected by the radiation belt. Despite not being directly affected by collapsed radiation, the country still faced major problems of its own. In 2042, a severe economic crisis overwhelmed the nation after a series of... I sighed lay back on my seat, muttering to myself. Why do we even need to learn this boring stuff? Now, now, it's important to know your history. Although, yeah, Helene teaches it in the most boring way possible by repeating her textbook verbatim. I'm slightly startled by the doll behind me, who replied in whispers. Without turning around, I continued the conversation. The Ukrainian crisis was the closest we were to World War III. If the talks with the UN had failed, we might not have been here now. It would also have been the first time dolls would be used in warfare. Huh. Well, this is kind of awkward, now that I'm reading this. Huh, oh, that's interesting. I wonder where we could have been in that case. I don't know, maybe fighting in the battlefield? Being recruited by a PMC and trying to survive in a post-apocalyptic world? 
Yeah, maybe. That doesn't sound like a lot of fun, though. Indeed, it doesn't. Oh, it's lunchtime in three, two, one. The sound of the bell gives class some much needed relief. I step out into the corridor and look around. While failing to spot any familiar faces, I turn around and watch the cafeteria. It seems that I'll be having lunch by myself today. The cafeteria is packed by the time I get there. As I stand in the queue, a strange feeling washes over me. It feels as though I am being watched. Huh? I look around, but finding someone watching me in this crowded cafeteria is harder than finding needle in a haystack. I shrug it off, take my plate and begin searching for a spot to eat. After a few months of scanning the cafeteria, something catches my eye. Or rather, someone. Oh, it's baby girl, 45. How you doing? Why are you looking at me like that though? I go up as I recognize that brown haired doll. UNP45's gaze is as sharp as ever. Is she staring at me? Drawn in by an unknown force, I take a step towards where she is sitting. My foot catches on something and I stumble. Why, hi, 45. Good to see you. How you doing? Uh, I barely managed to keep myself and my tray from toppling over. If you had a doll's turn and look curiously at me before going back to the meals, I sigh and straighten up. Just what am I doing? Uh, let's see, let's go to 45. What is going on with you, girly? I make up my mind and begin walking over to the table. UMP45's eyes follow me each step of the way. She gives me a small smirk as I stop next to her table. Nice seeing you here, Shiki. I go. No going back now. Um. Is this seat taken? 45 gestures to the seat across from her. Help yourself. I carefully set my tray down and settle into the awkward seat. Another tray clatters down onto the table next to me, and Sun throws her arm around my shoulder. Hey, Shiki, I'm here too. Nice of you to join me in sis. I force myself to relax and flash a smile on my face. Nice. See you too, MP9. MP9 grins and begins picking various food items off of her tray. She slides a can of lemonade and a single cookie over to the MP45, who wordlessly accepts them. Huh. The MP45 doesn't appear to have a tray. Is she skipping lunch or something? Even for a doll, that might not be healthy. You sure that's enough for you, sis? It'll do. Thank you, Nine. Enjoy the rest of it. I glance down at my tray. For some reason, it seems almost excessive. I usually skip the bread and sometimes even the soup. Um, you can have some of my lunch if you want, MP45. The two dolls turn to me. Oh, and why would you do that, Shiki? What's in it for me? Uh, what's in it for you? Um, um, you scratch my back, I scratch yours, no, or not, hmm. here you go. You scratch my back and I scratch yours. Even before I buy smirks, she reaches over and plucks both the bread and the bowl of soup from it. Well, if you insist. That's family for you, always sharing what we've got. Thanks, Shiki. The table falls silent as everyone digs into their meals. I glance around the cafeteria. It's packed, with every table in sight fully occupied, and many more dolls moving about, searching for a free spot. Their voices all blend together into an indistinguishable white noise. I look back at EMP45. She appears to be observing me instead. You know, Shiki. Yes, EMP45? Just 45. As I was saying, you might want to put some more thought into who you decide to help and how far you would go for them. You 
This reminds me of a uh, what was that one mission event shower connection? I, I forgot. Forty-five shrugs. After all, some people have ulterior motives behind their good deeds. What? I never seen her if I make a different face. Usually she's smiling, but now she's uh, frowning, and uh, her eyebrows are furrowed. Hmm, <laughs> cute. I frown. She's not wrong, but still. You're right. Still, that does that mean we should stop being nice to uh to others altogether? Forty-five. Forty-five smirks again. It takes a bite out of the bread. Nah, not to everyone. Just to the ones that matter. 45 finishes off the bread and reaches for the cookie. Anyway, Shiki, there's no such thing as a free lunch in this world, so let me teach you a few things about this place. That is, if you want to play a little game. Pimpy and I perks up at those words for some reason. Oh, sis, is that? Mm hmm. Shiki, say yes, it's gonna be fun. Oh boy. Um, okay. MP9 cheers. 45 shakes her head. Her expression is amused rather than annoyed. Alright. Look over there. Tell me what you see. 45 gestures to a group of four dolls sitting several tables away. I frown, taking in the scene before me. A doll with long white hair gestures frantically at two others across her. One hand jabbing a small notebook repeatedly. They don't appear to be interested in what she's saying. Next to her, another doll watches the scene quietly. Her bleached blonde hair has this large flower ribbon like... Hmm, is that... Is that... Suomi? Maybe? We didn't know the right. The first doll looks at the one next to her, who shrugs. She sighs, sets the book down, and buries her face in her hands. All four dolls appear to be wearing sports uniforms of sorts. For some reason, the one with the flower ribbon has a black uniform, while the rest have red ones. What do you see, Shiki? I blink. Right, I was supposed to tell 45 everything, although I couldn't really hear what they were saying. I turn back to 45 and relay what I observed to her. She nods and smirks. Not bad. You have sharp eyes, Shiki. Mm hmm? Although, no one beats G G11 at this game. Where is the sleepy BP anyways? 45 takes a sip from her lemonade and gestures to the same group of dolls. You did say you can hear what they were saying. Well, Shiki, here's some advice for you. It's not just what people say, it's what they do. You can learn a lot about someone just by watching them. See that doll over there? MP45 gestures to the doll holding the notebook earlier. She's trying to get the attention of the other dolls again, all the time, all the while glancing at the doll next to her. That's IW IWS2000. She's the captain of the Griffin's volleyball team. Clap for her for interviewed her once, though she probably doesn't remember it now. They're pretty forgettable for some reason. 45 coughs. Um, as I was saying, she might be the captain, but she's not really the one in charge. Yet the 45 gestures to a doll with a flower ribbon. Her vice captain, AUG, does all the heavy lifting. Oh, right. Right. I frown and just continue watching. IWS tries to say something, but to no avail. Only when Og clears her throat to the other two dolls look at it from their phones. And they both know it. IWS gives Og a grateful look. She began speaking, gesturing at the book, and receiving unenthusiastic nods from the other two dolls. In its own way, it's sort of sad. 
Doesn't that remind you of someone else? Nifty 45 gestures to another table. Hold on, isn't that Star? Or are the other two dolls with her? They don't look like any of the other dolls I met before. Drag team members? But I didn't see them in training yesterday. How can that silver haired one even move about with her eyes closed? Oh, 8k12. Let's go! Star slams the table with her hands as she gets to her feet. The commotion goes unnoticed in the busy cafeteria. Not running! Star storms off, leaving the other two dolls behind. UMP9 whistles. Wow, she looks pissed, sis. You're right, Nine. I wonder. Perhaps that has to do with the upcoming student count elections. 45 hums. Club 404 is going to be busy with that, for sure. Wait, what? Wait, how is Club 404 involved with that? 45 shrugs and turns to face me. Nothing too fancy. We're just covering the whole thing for the newsletter. Interviews, opinions, polls, all that. Mm hmm. 416 G11's got the photos covered, hopefully. A look passes across the MP9's face. I sure hope they give us the right memory card this time, though. The new 416 could program an entire game on one when she's drunk. 45 smirks. As she says, she's all that we need, Nine. Oh my, time sure does fly when you're having fun. Fun, huh? Well, in its own way, this was pretty intriguing. Yeah, maybe we should do this again sometime soon. UMP 45 smirks. Sure, how could a girl ever say no to a free meal? The school bell rings. Everyone begins packing their things and leaving the classroom. As I make my way towards the school gates, an unfamiliar voice reaches my ears over the chatter of the other dolls. Ah, for frick's sake! I had plans this afternoon. All this over one stupid phone? There appears to be commotion just in front of the school gates. Squeezing my way through a crowd of dolls, I catch sight of what appears to be the source. A doll with pale blue hair screams in frustration that kicks the wall next to her. The impact of her black and green running shoe is enough to leave a visible dent in the concrete. The shorter doll leaning against her blinks slowly. Her uniform is a mess, like her wild gray hair. She looks as if she rolled right out of bed. Oh, yep. 416 and G11. Wait, they appear familiar, sorta. Eh. Why do I always get sound by with your lazy ass? My phone buzzes in my pocket, drawing my attention away from the two dolls. I step to the side to check on it. Huh. A text? From an unknown number? I probably shouldn't open it, but it's something. I think we forgot to say 45's number. I tap the screen in front as I skim over the words. Cheeky, it's 45. Do you mind helping Club 44 out with some filler articles? Thanks. Winky face. Ah, I have a bad feeling about this for some reason. Hey, you there! I blink and look up from my phone only to find the raging doll from earlier standing right in front of me. Her eyes are cold green and... Is that a bloody teardrop? You're shiki Khan, a nature has her student, aren't you? Uh... Yes? A sinister smile spreads across the doll's face. Good, come with me. Wait, wait, wait uh... Before I can say or do anything else, she grabs me by the wrist and begins to drag me out of the school. Oh, wait! Fortunately, she stops. I sigh and begin to form a question in my mind when she reaches out with her other hand and grabs the other doll by the back of her collar. You're coming too, sleepyhead. Wait! This time, she does not listen. 
I stumble over my own feet a few times before managing to find a rhythm. Why do weird things keep happening to me? After what feels like the longest 10 minutes of my life, we finally come to stop. I silently thank Wilbrod for all her morning exercise routines. The cafe we stopped in front of looks some familiar. I think it's the same one that I went to Kalina early in the week. The angry doll gestures to one of the nearby tables. She appears to have it calmed down somewhat, though her expression is still sour. Take a seat, Shiki. Uh, she fixes me a glare. With the other hand, she ties the gray-haired doll to the neighboring seat like a sack of potatoes. I gulp. Don't waste my time, Shiki. I carefully take a seat. The doll settles gracefully into one opposite of me. She pulls a laptop from her backpack and sets it on the table. I glance over at the gray-haired doll. Is she still... sleeping? How can she even do that? Let's get this over with. Uh, before we get started, could you at least tell me your name and what we're doing here? The doll freezes. She stares at me and blinks once, twice, then she slowly lowers her head to the desk and smacks it several times. I'm surrounded by idiots. Ah, oh boy. Um, are you okay? Never mind. I can handle this. My god. She strains and locks eyes with me. HK416, that's all you need to know. HK416 gestures to the other doll. The lazy ass over there is G11. G11 snorts and shovels in her sleep. HK416 uh, sighs. Don't cough. Is it just me or is that affection in her voice? Hey, nice. What if I told you, uh, told us about you? Said you could help me, us, with these filler articles. She did? Filler articles? For Club 404's newsletter. They're articles we just slap in there whenever we need something to fill up some space. HK416 grimaces. It's fucking disgraceful though. High-end elite doll like me stuck in squalor doing odd jobs with a bunch of brainlets? Well, what can I do? I had to listen to 45 even though I can write an arc way better than her. The loud crash next to me almost makes me jump out of my seat. Oh my god, what's the same? HK416, I'm sorry if I butcher the German. I am so sorry. HK416 gets to her feet and storms over to the sleeping G11, who has rolled over onto the floor. She roughly nudges the gray haired doll with her shoe's heel. Get up already! Make that lazy ass of yours useful, why don't you? G11 groans and sits up. HK416 hauls her to her feet and shows an expensive looking camera into her hands. Uh, what am I supposed to do? Take photos, damn it! Find something interesting, or strange, or scandalous, whatever. G11 groans again and shuffles off. She reminds me of a zombie in a horror film, but I can't tell but feel sorry for her instead of terrified. Maybe I should go with her? Forget it, she'll be fine. I need your help on something else anyways. I sigh. Okay then, what do you need? HK416 is silent for a few minutes, typing way rapidly on her laptop. She eventually looks up at me. Tell me, Shiki, what do you think about the upcoming student elections? Someone once said to me that time flies while you're having fun. Spending time with HK416 was like crawling through barbed wire of a broken glass. Oof. Um, can we... Please take a break. HK416 frowns and stops typing. She glances at her laptop screen, then looks up at me. I pull my phone out and check the time. How has it only been an hour? Shiki. I'm back. 
oh my god, you opened your eyes. Or maybe, I don't know, I don't pay attention to you a lot. Never have been so happy to see another doll. HK416 turns to G11. Her expression softens slightly. Welcome back. How'd it go? G11 groans and hands with the camera. HK416 takes it and begins looking through the photos. Her frown returns, growing deeper by a second. Aw, uh, is it all blurry photos, G11? Out of curiosity, I look over the camera screen. HK416 doesn't try to stop me. Huh. The images and subjects might appear random, but the composition? It's good. Almost professional, even. What the hell is all this? G11 groans and flops onto Nier's chair. HK416 continues yelling at her. Why are you taking photos of random dolls on the street? What are they even doing? HK416 presses a button. Two dolls appear on the screen, dressed in what appears to be martial arts uniforms. Their stances are strange, and they stare intently at each other. Some sort of staring contest? HK416 presses the button again. Two different dolls appear on the screen. One has neon green hair tied and twin pigtails, while the other has messy light blue hair and striking crimson eyes. I don't know their names, but I think that's the lead singer and drummer of one of Griffin's student bands, respectively. They both have equally dopey grins on their faces. With the earbud they are sharing, they appear to be listening to something, and are they holding hands? I knew they were. Wait, no. Ah, how did you even get the shot? HK416 presses the button once more. G Legend's voice dress out from the camera. Why is there even a point of video recording here? What the hell are you singing? My phone buzzes in my hand. I glance at it. It's a text from Elrod. An idea forms in my mind. Uh, I have to go? HK416 reaches out and grabs G11 by the ear. Ah, if you didn't sound so damn good, I would have deleted it immediately. Oh, that's so hard. I shake my head and gather my things, before quietly stepping into the late afternoon crowd. That was interesting, to say the least. It doesn't take me long to make my way through the streets. As expected, Wellrod is waiting with the car at the location of text. She dips her head as I slip into the back seat. Did you enjoy your day at school, Master? Of course. There's something new every day. Wellrod gets on the car and sells in the driver's seat. That is fortunate. I feared that would be too stressful for you to adapt to your new surroundings. Yet yeah, it seems that you can indulge yourself into new experiences quite readily. Well, there are a lot of friendly people who make things easier. Your bonds with others are very valuable. I'm grateful that your companions are here to help. I wonder how well Rod would interact with others. She is a doll, just like them. Still, their lives seem so distant. While everybody is going to school together, exploring their youth just like humans, she is performing jobs alone. Could it be possible that this kind of separation makes her feel lonely? I'm left to ponder for a while, until I'm brought back to reality by the screech in the car's brakes. Master, we have arrived. Wellrod turns back to face me from the driver's seat. Oh, thank you, Wellrod. You seem to have been lost in trance. Is something bothering you? Um, well... I want to ask her about it. I'm not sure if I should. It might be a sore spot for her. If there is something on your mind, please feel free to speak up. I shall assist you in any way I can. Uh, it's nothing. I I'm fine, Wellrod. Wellrod stares at me. As if searching my eyes for a sign, eventually she looks back toward the house, uh, towards the house, her search en ending empty-handed. Oh man, I can't talk to her or read. 
If that were ever to change, please don't hesitate to ask my aid. Thank you, Wellrod. I always feel safer when you're around. That is my duty. Please take this time to recover from your work at school. I shall head towards the market and gather the groceries for tonight's dinner. She's going alone. I understand that Wellrod is more than capable of handling herself. Still, it's troubling to see her so distant. Maybe I can help? Um, let me go with you, Wellrod. Wellrod looks at me in surprise. Oh, thank you for your kind offer, Master, but you need not worry about me. I can easily carry everything. Of course, but we can gather them faster together. Oh, I hate to bother you with work, Master. You do not have to assist me. I don't have to, but I want to help you. The timid expression that spreads across Wellrod's face is something I've yet to see. She twiddles her fingers, tracing a series of complicated patterns in the air. Oh, that's so cute. Wellrod, you're so cute. They're supposed to be symbols of some sort. I had no idea what any of it means. Very well. If that is your wish, then I cannot deny it. Wellrod shifts her attention back to road and steps on the gas once more. Now the ride is deathly silent. Does not help that the car is noiseless, unless Wellrod decides to go on another wild ride. So, Wellrod, what are some things you like to do in your free time? Wellrod takes a moment to think. Nothing noteworthy. Could she really not think of anything? Or is she reluctant to say? I don't like the sound of it either way. Do you watch any shows or movies? Another pause. Whatever is on at the time, in between my daily tasks. And another vague reply. The parrot continues. Seems that no matter what I ask her, she won't open up. Suddenly my phone, as I was also tired of silence, burst out in melody. Quickly, I dismissed the reminder to start my homework. That can wait. Ah, sorry, Wellrod, I forgot to turn the volume down. Master. She hesitates in her speech. What was that song? Oh, eh. It's just some overworld music of a game I played a while ago. Ah, is that so? Mm hmm. It's from an RPG. Plays a mage who goes around the kingdom trying to end its curse. Does the mage wear a cone sheet hat in that game? He does, actually. How did you know that, Walrod? I believe I've seen town citizens playing it quite a while back on portable devices. That tune seemed quite familiar. The soundtrack is unforgettable. Hearing it always brings back memories. Master, who is it that cursed the kingdom? The townspeople themselves, peer chain peer, parent chain child, and one chain to oneself. Some didn't know it was a curse, some did. The self inflicted would be considered lucky to know it was a curse at all. How did the mage cure them? Well, each person was unique, much like the curses they bore. So the mage entered their souls and vanquished the monsters within. Was the mage never cursed himself? Was he? Huh. Maybe. I never actually got to finish the game. Hmm. Fascinating. That's quite the story, Master. Stories like these never fail to amaze me. I have been to places far and wide, and heard tales as old as time. Both towering skyscrapers and the vast green expanses of the country have stories to tell. While Rod's voice rises, her speech growing more fiery with every word. From the stories of her everyday men and women to mythical legends of everlasting fame. Real or fictional, the heroes of those stories always champion love, peace, and justice. That's why I've always aspired to, to become the hero of my own story. For within every story exists a hero. Spark and eyes makes me smile. Her passion is aflame in the dark, like a moth. 
and I can't help but be drawn towards it. I'd love to see her share more of her stories. They're fascinating. But I want to see that spark in her eyes again. We've arrived, Nestor. Already? Between the silence that lasted for an eternity and the discussion that flew by, I feel like I lost all track of time. Well, Rod and I exit the car, entering the market. Can I see the list, Well, Rod? Very well. She hands me a small sticky note. I believe you can obtain these ingredients. Her finger floats over the list. Conveniently, only the lightest items are highlighted. Alright, I'll meet you to grab them all of them. I'll meet you back at the car. I shall see you then, Master. If anything happens, just call my name. Don't worry, Railroad. I'll be fine. I head further to Mark alone. This task doesn't really require too much attention. What's really on my mind is well, Rod. Whenever I ask her about myself, she would deflect the question. I can't be certain she's doing that on purpose, though. I doubt Walrod would intentionally hide things from me. Perhaps she feels that her true responses would not be well received by me? Despite all these struggles, I still feel that I know more about Walrod now than I did before. Reactions and attitude paint a picture that worlds cannot capture. Oops. Seeing her come out of her shell, I know what she withholds a sense of wonder and awe from others. Half of her speaks only about obligations, but I wish to see the other half that speaks about passions. It's hard to juggle all these thoughts at once. I don't think I should be burning my brain out on a grocery trip. It doesn't take long to gather everything. Soon enough, I'm at the car. Braxy's packed the bags. Well, Rod, however, is nowhere in sight. Where did she go? As I gave her many moving figures, Well, Rod is not among them. I should have seen her entering the market if she forgot anything. Without any other clues, I head out to search. Here, the colored gold scratches my eyes. Well, Rod is staying inside a nearby store. Its shelves are packed with books, each seemingly belonging to a different era. Robert New sits. Uh, okay. Robert New sits beside old brown old. Approaching, I can see your eyes fixated on something. It's a book. Unlike the novel surrounding it, rather she's taking a rule book for a tabletop game. A shining knight and red voids kill a dragon fight for the cover's battleground. Ah, d and Do you play these types of games, Wolrod? She jumps back at a small yelp. Senior shocked it's a rare sight. You'd have a hard time catching Wolrod off guard in any other situation. Ah, Master, I apologize. I should have waited at the car. You shouldn't have to carry the bags for so long. Ah, that's no problem. I reach for the book. Were you planning on getting this? A faint blush develops in Wellrod's face. Uh, do not worry about it, Master. It was just my curiosity getting out of hand. It wouldn't be right to spend any resources unprofessionally. Despite how hard she tries, there are things you can't hide. It's written in her wandering eyes. I take the box in my free hand. Master, but... This isn't a business investment, I'm just getting a game that seems interesting. It wouldn't be fun to play alone. Would you mind helping me with that, Walrod? A genuinely satisfied smile overrides her poker face. One's work and passions can coexist. I would even say that a person needs both to truly prosper. Thank you, Master. I hand the book over to Walrod, I pay for the book, and we head back to the car. All the while, Walrod is flipping through the book with stars in her eyes. Aw, cute. I think you've got everything. 
I place the final bag against the car. The seats are packed full of plastic bags piled together. I can move the bags to the front if you like, Master. It would be easier for me to sit in the front, Will Rod. Will Rod's eyes widened slightly in surprise. Ah, uh, yes, if you wish, Master. As I settle down in the passenger seat, Will Rod passes the book back to me before starting the engine. Page after page and wondrous illustrations greet my eyes. Does anything in there catch your interest, Master? Oh, absolutely. It's difficult to find something that isn't appealing. Indeed. Have you seen the magic spells page? They have added a different icon for each branch. Back home, I retire to my room after dinner. Just as I finish resetting logistics and close my game, I get a text from UMP9. Oh. Hey, Chiki. Oh, she put in even a little emoji. Still awake? No, I'm asleep. So, You're a funny one, Chiki. I like you. Anyway, are you free tomorrow evening? I think so. Why? Not good enough. Mm. You have to make time for us tomorrow evening. Freddy Fox took the trouble organizing this entire event. We cannot let her down. Fine, fine, I'm free. What event are you talking about? So, we, Club 404, are going on a group date tomorrow, and you are invited. A group date? Excuse me? Just kidding. We're really gonna hang out together, but we would really like it if you tagged along. We'll meet up at the school gates at the club activities are over. I get a come, pretty please. Alright, I'll come. Perfect. Don't be late, okay? Good night. Good night, nine. I set my phone aside, turn out the lights, and get into bed. I was already invited to an after school hangout by a group of dolls I met barely three days ago. I guess I'm making good progress. They smile on my face or play the events of the day in my hand and fall asleep before I know it. And I think this is where I will end. Another day has finished and now we will start anew the next time. If you want to play this for yourself, the links will be provided in the description and the comments down below. And if you want to you know, support them, I will provide links to their Twitter if you want to follow them up on updates. Anyways, if you want to watch more of this original, please check the playlist down below. And thank you, and take care.